Welcome to the AEM 251 lab. Today we are going to do the shear stress in beams. So first let's, uh, I have already switched on the computer and I have loaded a load like any tension test. So you can see that the load over there is zero since my load is not touching the beam. Okay. So today what we are going to do is we are going to measure the distribution of the shear stress along the cross section of the beam. Okay. So in order to do that, I have over here uh, five shear gauges which are placed over here. So if you look into the uh, shear gauge diagram uh, in your manual, you can see the distribution of the five gauges. Okay. So with the help of these five gauges, I will be able to measure the shear stress eventually at these gauge locations in the beam. So by doing that, I will be able to find out how the shear stress changes along the cross section of the beam. Okay, so I have five gauges, so that's why I need five channels. So you can see that one, two, three, and four. This is the first blue box I ever have over here. The first strain gauge indicator, one, two, three, four are connected over here, and the fifth gauge is connected over there. Okay, so. For this uh, particular strain gauge, keep in mind that the bridge configuration for the shear experiment should be in the half bridge shear mode. So you can see that I have already set the uh, channel to half bridge shear mode. You can do that if it is not there in the half bridge shear mode. You can do that by pressing these buttons over here and ultimately finding out which one is half bridge shear. Once you do that, the next step will be to check the gauge factor, which is. Uh, which you can check for each individual channel. So I'm checking for the fourth gauge. It's going to be 2.080. So it's going to 2.080 is the gauge factor for every gauge. So just make sure it's 2.080. I can see that it is 2.080 for all except for the first one, which I'm going to go ahead and change to 2.080. So it's eight. And then I'm going to press menu. And then what you do is you go ahead and hit click balance and just let the string gauges balance e balance out so that it is it goes back to zero. Okay. So you can see that all my string gauge readouts are very close to zero. Similarly, you can see over here I have set up the gauges in the same way. Just one thing keep in mind is that if you see over here, you can see the half bridge diagram. So your red wire will go to P plus your uh, white or black wire it's interchangeable it will go to s minus and the other wire should go to p minus so if you zoom in over here you're going to see that the my third wire goes in to p minus which is very different from the one we did for the positive ratio and the bending test so please keep this in mind because this is going to affect the readings of the strain gauges okay so once i have uh, set up all my strain gauges and i made sure that all of them are half bridge now I can go ahead and start my experiment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the handle remote once again and I'm going to apply load onto the beam. Okay. So you guys can again split up in groups and one of you can monitor the load and one of you can control the load and one of you can move, a couple of you guys can you know, read out the string. So let me take the handheld remote and let me apply some load. Okay. I'm applying a load and let me take it up to say 700. It's an arbitrary load for all the specific load. Please look into your manual, there you will see. And don't forget to re, uh, record the uh, strain gauge readout for zero load, okay? I'm not going to show that in this video. Um, I'm just going to take it up to say 600 and just going to read out the strain gauges. So I'm at 600 now. So we have applied a load of around 600 pounds and you can see that the beam is under load and you can see the curvature of the beam over here and we have like I told you we have uh, five shear gauges over here. So the gauges near the edge will have the least shear stress and the uh, gauges near uh, along the neutral axis will have the maximum shear stress. So let me read out the gauges and see what the gauges are. So my first gauge is positive 68, second gauge positive 98. Third gauge reads 
positive 109, fourth gauge positive 85, fifth gauge positive 78. So we see that all our uh, gauge, strain gauge readouts are positive. Okay. And the other thing which we see is that the first gauge and the fifth gauge have the minimum value because they are closer to the edge. In the edge, the shear stress should be zero. And along the neutral axis, I see that uh, my third gauge, which is along the neutral axis, it reads uh, positive 109. So it is the it gives me the idea that you know along the neutral axis, the shear stress should be maximum. So that is in accordance to theory. So what you have to do is you at every load level, you have to record these gauges and then follow your manual and do the calculations and find out the shear stress at 1000 pounds then plot the shear stress along the gauge location and then find out the same shear stress from theory and just compare the theoretical shear stress with the experimental shear stress so it's again like a kind of like a validation so that is the main aim of our experiment thank you